on welcome to the partnership for international birding video conference on birding in jamaica on the phone to me is uh on, on the phone today is dr ann um haynes sutton sutton haynes i don't know which way we go there um but she's um been studying birds ecology and conservation in jamaica for more than 30 years um ann lives in jamaica Aka at her own private research and ecotourism hub called Marshall's Pen. Um, she also was the lead author of a photographic guide to the birds of Jamaica, published by Princeton University Press. Boy, that's a lot of detail there, Chuck. Um, in addition to guiding, Anne continues to carry out her own research on Jamaican birds and seabirds and consults as a conservation oh. ecologist on protected areas. Um, ecological assessments, conservation, education, and ecotourism. Um, then I'm just going to spend a few minutes laying down the ground rules here, and then um, um, Anne will start. Um, and if you're not um, muted, please please mute up. Um, and then we'll have some little common breaks for questions here and there. Um, our, our focus, um, golly geez, where's my cheat notes? Um, I may wing it here. Um, true Uli, we welcome all questions. Um, that's what this is all in, about, is involving people in the video conference. Um, but we do like to keep things, uh, keep everybody participating in the conference moving along. Um, so basically when the microphones are open outside the presentation, feel free to jump in with your questions. <coughs> and you can also um, text questions to me um, and I am the, the uh, conference uh, uh, facilitator here, and I am Chuck Thornton Cole Olby with the Partnership for International Birding. Um, we do have about 30 to 40 people on the call now. I guess we have 30 now. Um, um, so the best thing to do is text when Anna is speaking, but when we take these sort of natural geographic breaks, um, um, Either Anne or I will invite some more quest, 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 questions. Um, and I, I asked Anne pre-conference kind of what area she was going to cover. Um, she happily put forth Rockland Bird Sanctuary Airy, followed by the Sewage Works, and then sort of the Eastern Rainfall or Forest, and then Blue and Junk Row Mountain National Park. Um, and then sort of within there is hardware, hard, hard war gap, hard war gap. And then Marshall's pen, her total neck of the woods. And um, so with no further ado, I will uh, introduce Anne and we'll get moving here. Um, Anne, share away, the microphone is yours. Okay, good, good, good morning, everybody. Oh gosh, um, yes, my phone's starting to ring. Anyway. Um, Yes, so welcome everybody. I'm really excited to be here to tell you all about uh, Jamaica and Jamaican birds and to encourage you to come and visit us as soon as it becomes possible. Um, I'm really looking forward to telling you all about it. So uh, from my point of view, Jamaica is the best place to bird in Jamaica and there's in, in the Caribbean and there's many reasons why I say that. But, um, okay, let's go to the next slide. That would be a good thing. I thought there might be a little technical problem here somewhere. Ah, right. Okay. When we think of when we think of Jamaica, people don't think about birds. They think about B, about Usain Bolt. They think about Bob Marley. They might think about some herb, and they might think about James Bond. And all of these are parts of Jamaica's rich heritage. But people rarely think about biodiversity. And Jamaica is really rich in biodiversity, frogs, birds, moths, plants, snails, lizards. Um, it's, Jamaica is very, very rich. It's really a global biodiversity hotspot. Um, you can see uh, Google Earth image, like how much of Jamaica is still really substantially forested. Like most of the central part of Jamaica is, is forested. Um, and even along the South coast, there's, there's forest. Um, if you think about Jamaica, where it is, here it is down here, um, it's much smaller, very much smaller than Cuba or um, Hispaniola, and just a little bit bigger than Puerto Rico. But um, in terms of biodiversity, we have more birds, more endemic species of birds than 
either of those two other, any of the other greater Antilles. Um, we have a rich diversity of plants. We have 3,000 native species of plants and about 900 or more, because we're still discovering species, are endemic. We have 34 species of endemic reptiles. We have 21 species of, of, um, of amphibians, including this beautiful creature, which rejoices in the, name, in the name of snoring frog, because it actually does sound like somebody. That's what it sounds like in the night. And if you come here, you'll hear that, a beautiful creature. And we have more than 500 endemic species of land snails. And I don't promise to tell, show you more than one or two species of those. Um, but in terms of birds, we have, depending on how you count them, um, 30 species, endemic species of birds. Um, and out of those, four of those are monotypic endemic genera. So these, these are birds that belong to families that have no close relations anywhere else. So there's the Jamaican streamer tail, which was the original, the first, one of the first um, hummingbirds ever to be named by Linnaeus. Um, the Jamaican owl, um, the Jamaican yellow-shouldered grass quit, and the orange quit. These are species you can't find. You can't go anywhere in the world and see anything that's even closely related to these species. So it's very, very special. We have 19 um, endemic subspecies, like this Jamaican oriole and the banana quit. Banana quits are found throughout the, the West Indies, but they vary on most islands. Um, and this is one of our endemic subspecies. And this is our vervain hummingbird, which is again, it's found on, on other islands on like Hispaniola, but this is an endemic race. Um, in terms of Caribbean endemics, um, that there's about 18 species and subspecies of, of things that you can't see anywhere else, like the, this loggerhead kingbird or West Indian whistling duck. So altogether, if you never, Birded in Jamaica, there's more than uh, 67 species that you could, if you never birded the Caribbean before, you could get 67 new species. And of course, we also have North American mig migrant warblers, and it's always fun if you're coming from North America to see what our little friends are doing in the winter, because they might be doing acting quite differently, like the, um, the um, um, black-throated blue warbler, which is like would, would come to a bird feeder in Jamaica and would be in the treetops probably in, in North America. So just so quickly about the tour, I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but we're going to start, we'll land in the airport in Montego Bay. We're going to make a quick foray to into the, the lower mountains um, to a place called Rocklands. We'll come back and make a quick visit to the sewage worst places. Um, then all the way along the North Coast to stay in Port Antonio and visit the John Crow Mountains, which is over here, it's wet forest. Um, once one of the areas that at one point had held the record for one of the wettest places on earth. Um, and then we come back up here and go across the island because we have a mountainous chain through the middle of the island. So across the mountainous chain and bird in a place called Hardware Gap in the Blue and John Crow Mountains before coming down, I don't know why my cursor keeps on going away. All right, coming down from the Elfin forests, the, one of the wettest places in Jamaica, right down to Hellshire, which is one of the driest forest places in Jamaica. And from there, we'll head all the way over to here, to Mandeville, which is where I live in sort of mid-level mid forest to catch up on some birds before heading back to Montego Bay. But one of the things that you'll find in Jamaica is that many of our species are common and widespread. Many of the endemic species are common and widespread in forests and gardens. And you're likely to see them in many different places like this Jamaican toady, which is, belongs to a family that's only found in the West Indies, the Rufus tail flycatcher and the Jamaican beckard. These are some of the things, species that are, you're likely to see at almost every site. So, Thinking about the first place we visit, we're going to visit, that's Rockland's Bird Sanctuary. Um, it's about 20 miles outside Montego Bay, and this is the view from Rocklands, looking down from the, from the, from the dry forest over Montego Bay. And here we can see, we're going to get a nice gentle introduction 
to to make us in more common endemic um, species. So like things like the, the orange quit, um, Caribbean dove, which is not an endemic species, it's an endemic race, but it's very, very beautiful dove. The Oriole, the toady, orange quit, banana quit, rufous tail flycatcher, woodpecker, a lot of common species are easy to see there, but it's not just the species why we want to go there. It's because of this incomparable experience. Wild hummingbirds come to perch on your finger. Um, and it's, it's just amazing to feel that the, the almost imperceptible weight of this incredible bird as it sits on your finger, finger to, to, to drink um, sugar water. Um, it never fails to amaze me. Um, it was actually set up, there was a, a lady after the Second War, a lady called Lisa Salmon, who'd been in the British Army. She was a sergeant and she came back and she had a love of birds. Um, and it probably took her about five years to teach the, um, the humming, to get the hummingbirds tame enough to come and, and perch on people's fingers. And you know, people say that was her army training, that um, she could even get hummingbirds to sit and behave themselves. So, um, yes, yeah, so going back, so I don't know if you have any questions about rocklands. Yeah, any, any quest questions out there? Um, I did get one texted question in, um, though pretty, any, any questions about Rockland or any overall Jamaica birding questions yet? We can save some um, um, of the overall stuff to the end. Any specific questions about Rockland and this ridiculous streamer tail hummingbird feeding thing? Oh my gosh, it is incredible. It is, a, it's just, <laughs> you know, your heart stops you know you think it's you think it's not going to happen for me and then it comes in and oh wow you know no matter how amazing. many times i do it uh, how many times i say oh well maybe that's just a you know it's just a, a tourist attraction but i mean it makes your heart race when it okay happens. i'm going to put in two of the questions from the audience one was um somebody caught and it's actually a person who's roomed with me on a birding tour before i won't name his name because it'll mess up our privacy bit but um did you make that drawing on the front, the front slide? Oh, yes. Yes, I did. Wow, 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 wow. Quite a talent there. And that was oh, the Ka Ahmed Bay, basically. What a nice, um, it, it, was, it was a watercolor from my memory's limited self. Is that right? Well, it was actually, I did it on the iPad. Also. Oh, nice. Yeah. Still looks cool. And then the other quest question, which I think we'll save to the end, is... Uh, um, just pelagic bird or er, er, erding off the coast of Jamaica, but let's take that at the end because I think okay. we'll, we'll hit some coastal stuff along the way here. I suspect, yep. um, okay. but I will I will make a note to save that question to the end. Any other questions, folks? If not, I think we'll move on. I will mute back up here. So we will coming back down to to the coast. We're going to make a brief stop at the Montego Bay sewage ponds where we have a chance to see um, some specialities like the West Indian whistling duck, uh, even a mast duck, um, and then the common, common um, uh, water birds and shorebirds and terns, just to provide a little bit of, of variety in our trip. So that would be a brief stop before we head across the, the, the North Coast to a very different habitat. Oh, sorry, this is, we might see shovelers as well. Yeah. So here, we go. this is where we're heading to the very wet um, and, and, and um, lush Ecclesdown Road, which is near Port Antonio. And this, this picture here, this isn't somebody's garden. This is just what the roadside looks like. Um, yeah, and it's, and it's characterized by these tree ferns, um, and just beautiful lush vegetation. And here, like in most places, we're not going to be hiking on rough trails. We, we're actually on this, this road, which has almost no traffic. Um, we can, we bird along the road uh, to gentle pace and we hope to see some places where we're really going to pick up some of the more, more rare um, endemic species. The speciality is this black bill streamer tail um, Jamaica has, depending on how you count it, and I count it as two species of, of streamer tail, the red-billed streamer tail, which you saw in my drawing, and this black-billed streamer tail, 
which uh, many of us consider to be a separate species and it's definitely it's smaller it has different behavior and it has a slightly different call it's slightly different colored um, and I think it's it ought to be split although um, some authorities don't split it yet but the other things we're going to be looking for here are some of the the deep forest um, species so the Jamaican blackbird the ringtail pigeon and this is where we're going to be looking for the, the two parrot species like this gorgeous yellow-billed parrot and the black-billed parrot. These are species that we'll be looking for on the Ecclestown Road. Um, from there, we're going to head to the Blue and John Crow Mountains, to the, to the, yeah, to the Port Royal Mountains, but I just wondered if you have any questions about Ecclestown Road before I move on. Let me unmute here. I will text, I will check the magic text box. Um, so um, one, all questions feel invited. Anybody want to open up a mic and ask away? If not, I will. I will throw a quick question in. Um, so um, mass duck is just one of those ultra rare desired birds in the U.S. of A. How slammy donkey is it in uh, Jamaica? Like you, you never miss them. Oh, they're pretty common, or uh, they're they're weird. Kinda... They're weird. Okay. Um, I, I, but, <laughs> but they, they're always here, um, but it can be variably hard to find them. That's we right. had a period about five years ago, like there was a there was a point where I could could have found you forty, um, but um, at, since then their numbers have been gradually declining, um, and it's pretty hit and miss whether you'll find one. Um, and you know, this, it, there's just an outside chance that you might see one at the at the um, at the sewage ponds. But actually, with our itinerary, we don't actually with this go to any other places where it would be possible. Um, but the, even the places where I used to be able to, say I could definitely find you one there. It's it hits it hits and miss right now. So weird. Say, Nothing like a I pain would, in the ass. Difficult. I bird. would say, yeah. Um, if I fine if if i uh, if by the time you arrange the tour i know where to find one we'll go there <laughs> yeah no no fair fair enough and yeah. there you go no it's just it's just one of those sort of birds that everybody wants yeah. to see see yeah. pop up on a rarity list here and they seldom yeah. do and right. the other, um, the other in fact, one i yeah can't remember the last time one was seen in the aba area but yeah. uh yeah so i mean it's sort of like a desired bird just because yeah. well we can you know, you get those weird little birds that you, um, you know, you hope to find, expect to see, and yeah. then you don't, and then they yep. become like this little <laughs> lusty thing you want to, you know, you kind of really yeah. want to see it. Yeah, yeah. Well, enough of my birding lusts. Let's, yeah, let's get but, back to the. But it, yeah. But yeah. Just to add to that, like the other possibility that we somehow, some years we have good chance with that people um, don't expect to find here and have difficulty in other places is the. Um, um, Spotted rail. Oh yeah, we do actually have spotted rail breeding sites that can can sometimes be visible, so people get really excited if we can find them. That, but again, it's not not a guaranteed thing. Right now, birding is always a little tricky here and there. I'm I'm yeah. sorry I brought up a more tricky tricky bird, but it was just on my. No, no. God, yes. I'd really like to see bird. And you know, and the funny thing about ducks too is we all expect them to be like West Indian whist, whistling duck, fairly easy mm -hmm. to find. And then, which I know it's not always easy to find, but you know, everybody expects, you know, let's take Northern Shoveler for an example. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, when you first, when I first became a bird watcher, Northern Shoveler was in one of my three first birds. And mm -hmm. I've just always assumed all ducks after that would be easy to find sitting on top of the walk, on top of the, mm -hmm. on top of the water, but mm -hmm. it's really just not true for a number of duck species. And there you go. Well, enough about ducks. Anybody got any other questions out there? Um, great. We'll uh, I'll mute up and you can go on. And thank okay. thank thank th th you. Great presentation so 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 okay. far. I look for I look forward to more. Okay. So we're gonna go head head now back to, through to the center of the island into the um, the Blue and um, Port Royal Mountains, and we're going to pass tree ferns and waterfalls and actually the Buff Bay River Road that we're going to take to drive into the center of the island, I think is the most beautiful road in the 
in the island and it takes you geologically from the most recent coastal plains up to the ancient volcanics that, that um, form the core of Jamaica. But um, that's, that's another story. So yes, this is what it looks like when it's cloud forest and lots of lichens and wet. This is a ringtail pigeon sitting here. And of course, this is the home of Blue Mountain Coffee. Um, so this is where you can buy your coffee if you so feel so. And we'll certainly be drinking it if you don't even buy it. So that makes the birding more interesting. Um, so here we can, this is another view of the, what the mountains are. And again, we, we won't be on any rough roads. We'll be on, on uh, pretty open trails that um, the flat, there's no hill walking involved. It's very comfortable. You can focus on the birds and not on the walking part. So the things we'll be looking for here at, at Blue Mount, the Blue Mountain Vireo, the blackbird, um, some doves, lizard cuckoos, chestnut belly cuckoo, and various other birds. So here's two of those most amazing doves. This is probably my favorite bird, apart from the toady in Jamaica. This is the, the Jamaican crested quail dove, also locally known as mountain witch. <laughs> um, and this is a ringtail pigeon, which is another two of our endemic doves. And they, well, these will be target species in the Blue Mountains. And just in case you thought it'd be hard to see a, um, a streamer tail, this is actually um, a photograph that I took with my cell phone at uh, the accommodation where we're going to be staying at a place called Starlight Chalet. So these hummingbirds are coming into the feeders and they are not shy. <laughs> you can get fabulous views of the, of the um, of streamer tails and many other species at the, at the right from the, this is from the veranda of the accommodation stay. Um, yeah, this is another bird we're going to be looking for, the uh, Jamaican lizard cuckoo. Um, we're going to be hoping to find um, Jamaican spindalis. And this is the blackbird that I mentioned to you about. So it uses this it's sort of related to similar to an oriole, it uses this beak to forage in, in bromeliads. So we'll be looking like if, you, if you're in the mountains and you see the bromeliads and if you happen to see leaves falling from a, from a bromeliad, just look in there because it's probably the, one of these blackbirds tossing out leaves and looking for insects and um, other in, worms and so on in, in the bromeliads. So yes, this is because just any about Blue Mountains. Any Blue Mountain questions at all? I'm, I'm going to feed it a little bit with um, my my Jamaican lizard cuckoo. Um, I mean, lizard cuckoos are pretty tricky to just stumble upon, right? But they're but you you feel pretty good about your lizard cuckoo Blue Mountain experience. Um, oh yes, I mean, okay. and they're white. They're widespread as well. They have a very distinctive yeah. call. call. They sound a bit like a, a machine gun. <laughs> okay. Um, but um, they, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So you're not worried about it, Adam, at all. So you've, yeah, okay. I'm not it's worried, a handsome. Yeah, I'm not worried about them. Yeah, yeah, I have to say very, it's a really handsome lizard cuckoo as lizard cuckoos yeah. go. And uh, nearly every Caribbean island has their own endemic lizard cuckoo. Yeah, right? That's right. Yeah. I mean, they're yeah. pretty cool looking. So that's they pretty very cool. And very, very interesting and wonderful to see. But yeah, and, and, and they feed primarily on lizards. Is that the deal? Um, on lizards and small frogs, and they'll okay. take a baby bird if they can get one. Oh, little devils. <laughs> Those little devils. They ruin our eco tour yeah. tourism when they do that. Um, <laughs> I one time did a. I was about to do a, a t-shirt for a PIB t-shirt, and I had um, an Arasari picture. And it's a good thing I blew it up because in the mouth of that Arasari was a baby bird. Oh. And I quickly deleted that photo and oh. uh, started to work on another one. But tonight, one of that sort of classic big build bird look. Yeah. Uh -huh. And it, it, anyway, uh, oops, that's all I have to say. Yeah. Um, any, any, any other questions out there, folks? If not, I will mute up and Anne will continue yeah. on. Yeah. So 
one of the things about islands is that the 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 biogeographic regions get sort of compressed so that um, this elfin forest in in um, in Jamaica is at about three to five thousand feet and similar um, ecosystems in on the continent would be much higher so you have this amazing experience that which we're going to go through which we're going to come down from the elfin forest and be on the in the dry forest on the coast um, so from bromeliads um, and dripping wet ferns down to cactuses and, and but almost desert-like conditions. And you're going to make that transition in it's a distance of about 40 miles. Uh, time, if we went all the way straight, would be about two hours. So you're going to transition from the wettest part of Jamaica to the driest part. This is the Hellshire Hills um, in, the, in the Portland Bike Protected Area. Portland Bike Protected Area is one of the areas I do most of my conservation work with them. I sort of work as something between a, a um, consultant and a volunteer, which means they pay me when they have money and when they don't, I still go on working. <laughs> kind of, it works for me. Um, but you can see it is, this is a limestone substrate um, and palms and cactuses and so on. And here we're going to be looking for but especially for this Bahama Mockingbird, um, which is a Jamaican endemic race. And it's only found in, in Jamaica, uh, the Isle of Pines in Cuba and uh, the Bahamas. And another species we'll be looking for that we won't see very much elsewhere is this stolid flycatcher. So we're gonna pick up those two species and enjoy the heat briefly. And then we're gonna head back into the center of the island to Marshall's Pen. And I don't know if you have questions about um, Hellshire, Okay. Hey man, I'm begging for some quest questions out there. Any questions, folks? I'm not begging, beg, egg, egg, uh, again. I mean, you're doing such a I good job. You're really covering well. Let's start. Okay, we can, let's see where we're going next. Yeah. So we're going to head back from that dry place to my home, which is where I'm, I'm speaking to you from right oh, just in here. Um, this is my house. It's um, a, a historic house was built probably about 1810 um, and it's a and the whole property is a declared protected national heritage um, site and um, so this is an old house and I have um, 310 acres of mixed um, pasture and forest it's more forest than pastures this is this is what the property looks like the forested hills and little patches of pasture for, for my red gold cows and my horse <laughs> yeah so there we go this is really another chance to to see um to see all the endemic species and i just wanted to, to since since i have a few claims to fame i will just post um here's phoebe snetzinger who you probably heard of and one of my claims to fame is that she actually got her i think it was her six thousandth bird um, actually at Marshall's Pen <laughs> on, a, on a bird tour. So that was kind of fun. Um, I wish I'd taken a picture of her when she was here, but anyway. The other, pretty, the other pretty awesome. Yeah, pretty awesome. But the other thing, the other thing was that um, this, if you watch the um, David Attenborough series, Life of Birds, um, there's one um, um, episode which is called um, Finding Partners. If you watch that, there's a whole thing about the, the habits of the, um, the Jamaican, um, the streamer tail. Um, and, um, and that was actually filmed here. Um, if you have time, I'll tell you a story. Do we have time for a story? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially if you right. watch David. So this is quite, or, or quite, a, quite a, a, a nice story. He didn't come here, unfortunately, uh, but he sent his team. But it sort of started with, with um, an email exchange and this was probably about 15 years ago. Um, so we had this email exchange about, about, you know, like when the streamer tales do it and like what, where do you see them and can you photograph them? And we sort of wondered at that time, you know, because it was when they were being a bit weird about emails, like whether they were going to censor us for being a little obscene. But anyway, <laughs> we came to, we, we, we managed to determine that, that we had a female on a nest um, and the BBC said they'd, said, they said they'd send the team. So they sent the team 
um, and they arrived and they have, you know, when they do these videos, they have like this was storyboard. So they told us what the story was. So you have to, you have to film the, the, um, the idea, the whole thing is that these streamer tales, the males and the females, they um, maintain separate uh, feeding territories. And the male will only let the female in exchange for a copulation. So this was the story that had to be filmed. And we said, well, it's pretty hard to film it. It's pretty brief. It's in the dark corner and we don't know when it's going to happen. So don't worry about that. Can you find us a stuffed female? <laughs> so we called the, the museum to see if they had any taxidermic specimens, but they said they were all too old and, and weren't up to it. But Fortunately, my husband's um, cousin was a taxidermist. So she made a specimen of a female and put her in the soliciting position. I don't know if you can see me, but something like this. Um, anyway, so, um, and, and my husband specialized in bird sound recording. So he knew the sound that she was going to make. So we wired her up in the tree and we put the speaker under the, under the tree um, and we had a bit of wire so she could go up and down um and we said i said this is never going to work uh, <laughs> anyway um we we pushed the play button on the, the on the on the old time recorder and and she started to cheep and the humming male came in and he looked at her and he flew up he did this sort of mating dance which involves spreading himself out to his maximum size his wings are spread and his tail is spread and he flies from side to side and she's supposed to do the same thing back but she wasn't doing much so he sort of went back and tried it again and he still didn't do anything and he went sat on the tree um and then he thought oh well nothing tried nothing done and if you watch the the, the video it's very carefully edited and um david attenborough says and she accepts him. <laughs> well, she didn't have much choice that she was dead. But anyway, uh, that's, that's how you have to do it sometimes. But anyway, so that was the Life of Birds story. Oh my gosh, that was a great <laughs> tale. Um, I think it takes away from my enjoyment of Life of Birds just, just a tiny bit. I truly, I, I love that entire series. And yeah. um, Attenborough, but I just, I, Honestly, he just he continues to come up with good content oh, as he a, ages away. It's just pretty impressive. Yeah. I mean, his thing on climate change, which I think came out about 18 months ago, 24 yeah. months ago, you know, it was sort of predicting our last summer, like, oh, by the way, things are going to get worse a lot sooner than we thought. And boy, that turned out to be true. And yeah. there you go. But anyway, um, yeah. Gosh, so, uh, any questions on Marshall Penn? Any more that you would like to share on Marshall Penn? Yeah, well, and, these are a few of the birds we like to see. There we go. Um, and the specialities, of course, are the night birds. So the owl walk is the speciality. So we will pretty um, very likely to be able to find you an owl. The, the, the owls, the owls might this up. I think there's at least two owls within... 20 meters of where I'm sitting at this. Um, this Jamaican owl is absolutely gorgeous bird. Yeah, and the, and the Jamaican um, the Northern Potu, which is a um, again an endemic Jamaican race. That's the other speciality of, of here. So yeah. So any any more qu any questions about um, about our um, about Marshall Spen? Gosh. Um, well, next we've, we've got, we've got our drive back. So, um, I, yeah. I assume there's some minor birding on the way back. Um, um yeah, um, not so much. Yeah. Yeah, All exactly. These, yeah. I mean, but let's, this is, let's, yeah, let's, just, let's, oh yeah. Okay. These were just, I mean, basically to say that, that, you know, that at Marshall's Pen, you got a chance. You should have got all the endemic birds by the time you got here. So this is a tough time to just sit back and really savor them and enjoy them. Um, uh, with no stress and, and no no bother. So yeah, so that's yeah yeah yeah. So um, the, um the... I think we should talk a little bit about um coastal birds, um which you don't do a lot of. So I mean, there's I mean to me there's a couple ways to think about pelagic birding. Probably forty different ways if you had Debbie Sherwa Otter on the phone. But um, you know. I mean, I'll use Hawaii as an example. It's an island place. Um, our guide there does a pretty good job at finding some offshore stuff. Um, 
any any sort of offshore birds that are that you can't get any place else? I mean, I assume that all anything offshore is probably both in Florida and all over the in the the yeah. lesser t- yes. so, so nothing yeah. special. There's nothing yeah. really special. Like we will we we can't. The one thing that we expect to see um, is the the um, and I. I, I forgot to put it on the places but actually so we do have a good chance of seeing white-tailed tropic bird oh which is a fantastic um, bird which is a lovely bird yes yeah and that's the only seabird that actually nests on the on the mainland like all the others you have to go um offshore in a boat to see them um gotcha. and their nesting season isn't um doesn't doesn't fit with bird tour season um gotcha. we have tried occasionally to to with various groups to do some pelagic birding um, from um, Port Antonio, but it hasn't really y- yielded any any results. I think, um, you know, just wherever the birds are going to, to, to feed, it's further offshore. Great. So, so pelagic birding isn't, uh, you know, the, isn't really a thing. Um, no, my PhD, I actually studied sooty terns and brown noddies, but that was on a um, on the Morant and Pedro Keys, which are, the Morant Keys are, are 40 miles offshore and the Pedro Keys are 60 miles offshore. Um, and that's, it's rough, it's rough, it's a long, expensive trip. So it's not something that we've ever been able to incorporate in any um, bird, bird tour stuff. Right. And things like brown noddies um, that nest closer inshore, royal terns, these terns, um, those aren't nesting at the time of year when we usually do bird tours. So right. unfortunately, sort of Florida stuff anyway. doesn't really feature much. Yeah, exactly. Um, I assume um, the person who asked that question, whose name I will not mention directly, but um, for privacy reasons, again, um, <clears throat> feel free to open your mic and do a follow-up quest- question if you would like. Or say, you got it, Anna and Chuck. <laughs> And there you go. Any other quest, quest, questions out there, feel free to unmute. I'll, I'll just say, since I'm the one who asked the question. Yes, Anne, thank uh, you, person. Uh, that, uh, no, I appreciate the, uh, <laughs> I, I know you've spent a fair amount of time of, re, of researching the pelagic birds of Jamaica because I've been following you for a few years and I would have fallen on a sword rather than miss this video today. <laughs> Um, so it's, it's, uh, I'm grateful for your, um, insights about the, the distances involved, which of course with pelagic birding isn't really that unusual. I'm not unaccustomed to going 60, 80, hundred miles offshore if you're, you know, in search of something really good, but, but brown noddies and sooty terns are, uh, much more easily available Absolutely. at other, other destinations, yeah. although I'm still, uh, trying to figure out a way to do uh, spend some time in the Mona Passage uh, mm-hmm. somewhat east of you to see if anything will turn up flying through yeah. there. Yeah. Um, now, uh, and, and I have birded Jamaica before on my own in a rental car, you know, a lady of a certain age driving this little red thing around. Um, and the bird club of Kingston uh, gave me some advice when I inadvertently booked a, an Airbnb with them. So I've been up into hardware gap, although I think my trip into the John Crows might have been uh, impeded by a funeral procession that day. So I was <laughs> oh, no. pretty much advised I wasn't going to be able to get through <laughs> for the rest of the day. <laughs> um, but I have heard some interesting things about visiting the Black River morass, uh, uh-huh. more the upper than the lower. Again, uh-huh. not an easy place to get into. Do you have anything to say about that? Yeah, it's a beautiful place to go. And uh, when we were talking about the um, things, that things, possibilities of some additional species, so like the um, um, the spotted rail, um, yellow-breasted crake, um, you know, these things of a mast duck. Those are all sometimes possible in the um, in the upper morass. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it provides a, a, a another aspect of of birding, and it, it's not it's not really difficult. It's it's a bit hard to find, but it's easy to get in once you once you know where you're going. 
Yes, I have a, you must know the fish hatchery out that way or the oh, fish yes. farm, excuse me. Yes, yes. Yes. Um, so I was out that way one afternoon. Uh, I couldn't really get into the morass, upper morass on a boat. So I was just kind of poking around and, and this car full of men go by as I'm examining whatever's flying around in some tree. This is a November day some years mm -hmm. ago. And, and out of the window drifts this long call mom this is a wild and dangerous place <laughs> oh, that's and, uh, funny you may not think that but uh later mm -hmm. in kingston i was told that yeah they usually let the constabulary know that they're going to be in the area before they go too far off the beaten track <laughs> oh uh, well I, i've never done that but uh, yeah okay. yeah so um one question here, and I think I know the answer, but I'll let you answer it. What's sort of the best season or seasons? And I, I think of, um, I mean, I know Cuba because we sell so many Cuban tours. It's crazy um, outside of the pandemic, of course. But um, there, I always get questions about hurricanes. Um, but the hurricanes, I mean, I always tell people, boy, it's a lot like Florida because the same hurricanes, once they go through the Antilles are on their way to the Florida coast, usually mm -hmm. not all always, but I mean, you, you get one or two big storms a year, right? And typically one, correct? Mm, let's hope. Depends on the year. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Yeah, we've had, we've had like this year, we haven't been affected touch wood by any major storms, but we've had a lot of rain and we've had two you know, major flood events so far this year. And um, we're about halfway through. So. Right. And so, so it's the hurricane season. I mean, everybody always points to October, September, October, November. Is that pretty mm. much the usual yeah, hurricane August, anytime? August, September. Yeah, from August to November, but you know, with climate change, it sort of get gets a bit more spun out. But it does. yeah, those are the peak months. It does. It does. Um, I gotcha. And then the hot months, the really super hot months, are basically June, July, August. You would say. Yeah, but I mean, remember we have a oceanic climate, so oh, you know okay. our our um, you know the super hot super hot for Jamaica means temperatures in the nineties. You know, not you know, not um, not temperatures over a hundred. That would be very rare. That's gotcha. you know, but so, yet now more and more common in the United States. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah. So it's you know the island breezes modify the climate, and of course, I, where I live, I live at two thousand feet, and you lose a one degree Fahrenheit for every three hundred feet. So I'm um, six six or seven degrees cooler here. Um, I gotcha in the you know at any given time of the year than down on the on the plane so and so um ignoring american migrants coming down which of course is more of a usa winter timey thing um you're kind of game to run a tour most any month out of the year is that what i'm hearing yeah you can we can find all the endemics or any time of the year if that's what you're looking for um, and if you don't mind a small risk of, of getting wet, then, you know, even a, a, you know, a small risk of hurricanes, then, yeah, any time of the year is, can work. But the best, the, the most interesting time, of course, is like April, May, because as well as having North American migrants, which um, come down from the north, in the summer, we have Austral migrants that come up from the south. So you catch... Ah. Um, Things like the um, Antillean nighthawk and, and the black whiskered vireo, um, those things are only here in the summer. So there's this sort of transitional period where you have everything. <laughs> I gotcha. Yeah. Um, did the person who asked that question, if you would like to do a follow up question, feel free to unmute and do so. Any other questions out there? Um, well, I'm just going to take a brief bit for sort of the administrative part of the thing. And that's yeah. just if for some reason somebody felt I mentioned their first and last name and you would like us to delete you from the video conference, please let me know. But I think I bent over backwards not to make that mistake today. 
And, um, but if you do feel that we interrupted your privacy some way, just email us at service at PIBird.com and we will delete you from the video conference, which will be on our website and um, which will be on YouTube, on our YouTube channel. Um, Wow, all this media that we have now. Yeah, I was just going to say it to have a few closing remarks. Yes, oh, I would love to hear Who should Bird in Jamaica? If you never birded in the West Indies, you're going to enjoy, so you've, got a, you've got a possibility of up to about um, nearly 60-something well, species of birds. If you have birded in the West Indies, we've got the best and the most visible endemic species. Um, if you want to get to know 30 or more endemic species, get to know them well and really enjoy them, you should come. You don't, don't come if, you, if, you, if you, what you're looking for is, is arduous, um, muddy, steep, or difficult birding because we're not going to be offering you long hikes or um, rough trails. It's all pretty much, um, you know, it's birding, but it's not hiking and, and rough stuff. So <laughs> anyway, I'm really looking forward to showing you all these wonderful birds. Yeah. And thank you so much for the presentation. I look forward to catching up with you in the next couple of weeks and figuring out if we can run a, a resilient corridor birding tour with some success. Um, okay, and just so thinking about that. Right. And just so folks know what that's about, the resilient corridor, the Jamaican health authorities are limiting tourism in Jamaica to the resilient corridor which is mostly a coastal thing, but it does have a couple inland jabins. I'm really curious to see if we can get in that sort of colder, wetter place with the black-billed streamer tail. I'm pretty excited to have that discussion. Um, So Jamaica and future birding fans look forward to an announcement on that in the next month or so, because we would love I mean, quite frankly, we had a tour on go in November and I chickened out because of this resilient corridor thing because we couldn't get to Marshall's pen. But, um, hmm, Anne, Anne offered this, restric- you know, intriguing thought at the start of the call. So we'll see where that heads. So stay tuned for more. Um, I would just like to say, Anne, what a very excellent presentation. Thank you so much for your time. Oh. Thank you. I mean, it's great, great fun. Always, always nice to talk about my favorite topic. <laughs> yes, indeed. Thank you. All right.